Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk a little bit about a recent Criterion release. This is Devil in a Blue Dress from 1995, directed by Carl Franklin and starring Denzel Washington, Don Cheeto, Tom Sizemore, and Jennifer Beals. And it's just absolutely beautiful. For those of you who, uh, who may have seen some of my earlier videos, I damaged my old 4K UHD, but for my birthday I bought myself a new one. And so Devil in Blue Dress uh, is, is the first one I've seen. And it, it is one of the top releases of the, of, of the year for Criterion. I mean, it's, it, you were provided both the UHD and the Blu-ray, uh, plus it's got some great supplements on it as well. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's set in 1948 um, LA. It's based on a novel. Uh, this is a library copy I got out of the library, Devil in a Blue Dress, Walter Mosley. This is the first of the Easy Rollins detective um, stories that he's written. I, I've read a few others. I think he's written maybe 15 to 20 Easy Rollins books. Um, so this is uh, sort of the origin story for Easy, Easy Rollins. He's not a detective in the beginning of this, uh, in this first uh, uh, novel in the series. Um, we're set in 1948 LA. It's post-war. Um, uh, Easy has come back from the war. He's saved up some money. He's uh, got a, a mortgage on a house. He, he's uh, been able to buy a car. He's working in a aircraft uh, factory, but he loses his job. And the only way he's going to get it back is if he crawls on his knees and begs for it. He's not going to do that. But he needs money because he's got a mortgage. And and uh, this is um, a, a segment of L.A. that was populated in, in this post-war era uh, by uh, a migration that came from uh, Texas and, um, and Louisiana. <clears throat> so many of the people Easy knows, <laughs> in L.A., Easy knows. Um, and they all sort of have roots back to, to uh, Texas and Louisiana. They, they've seeking a new life, the American dream. Is it the American dream even possible for black people in the post-war era? They fought for their country, but they're still, when they come back home, they're considered to be second-class citizens. Um, so he needs, he needs money. Uh, his friend who, is, who owns a bar introduces him to a white, obvious gangster, played by Tom Sizemore, uh, who offers money uh, in the uh, kind of proverbial hard-boiled world of, of 1940s detective, find a girl. All he has to do is find a girl. And he, he gets 100 bucks, uh, which was a lot of money in 1948. Um, but he knows, Easy knows, that he is, he's, he's embarking on a slippery slope. He, and very soon he realizes he's gotten into something that he can't get out of. He's, what he's gotten into is the whole world of corruption, uh, the corruption of, of the political world, the police world that's so intertwined in, in Los Angeles. He's made his deal with the devil, and he now is getting this vision of hell. Um, and, uh, and, and as a black man, he, just, he, he, has, he, he can't occupy the same spaces that white people do. And, and in fact, the, uh, the chief of police in LA, long time chief of police in LA, was uh, openly an avowed white supremacist. So black, black, uh, black people are treated much differently by the police than, than are the white people. So we, we get a sense, I think, a little bit of a lot of movies, but uh, in this sense, at least LA Confidential, the just you know, endemic corruption, uh, very much we get a feel of Chinatown because we're getting a history, a moment in time uh, for uh, in, in LA history. Um, but as he grows, as easy grows deeper, he, he's trying to be a good person. <laughs> he, he just wants to have his house, but he knows he's over his head. So he calls back to Houston where he grew up, his childhood friend. He needs help. So. Um, but he's reluctant to call because his this friend is is well not to put too fine a point on he's kind of pathological a murderer, uh, but he's his friend and uh, you know he's loyal to to Easy and he comes through in the in the moments uh, the do ex machina from Greek drama where 
when all the everything seems there's not going to be any kind of uh, satisfactory conclusion, they're in trouble, the character's in trouble, a big grain would come in, the gods would come down and sort it all out. And so Mouse is sort of, it sort of plays that character because he's there when he's the, he, he comes just at the right moment to save Easy. And again, he's sort of the alter ego of Easy because Easy wants to be a good person. He wants to do right. He has a, even though he's now caught up in this world of cynicism, cynicism he doesn't want to become a cynic. And, and Mouse sort of is the emblem of what he could be. Uh, especially had he stayed in Houston and not come to LA. So the casting in this movie is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, Denzel Washington uh, as, uh, as, as Easy Rollins, it's just absolutely perfect, uh, uh, perfect casting here. Uh, Don Cheeto as Mouse, this was a kind of breakout role for him. And the uh, in initial uh, uh, treatment of, of uh, Devil and Bourgeois, they were going to put Mouse and, and uh, Easy together as one character because Denzel, Easy is not, you know, he, he is, he's uncertain, he, he, he's uncomfortable, he's uncertain of what to do. And uh, Mouse knows what to do right, <laughs> right away. He doesn't, he doesn't stop to think. So he's not the traditional um, Philip Marlowe type character. Uh, although we see the make again, this is an origin story, so we're seeing the makings of of Easy Rollins as as he develops through through the uh, through uh, Walter Mosley's series, and so then we have Tom Sizemore as the devil, <laughs> uh, and he is just he is absolutely great in this in, in this movie. I mean, he's just he he just nails this role <laughs> uh, uh, perfectly. We get General Jennifer Beals as the um, as sort of the femme fatale. She's the devil in a blue dress, um, a blue dress that really stands out because we have a sort of muted tone to the colors, and uh, there's not a lot of uh, vivid colors. But her blue dress does stand out, and she, she and uh, it's mentioned in the in the supplements how how uh, the way she's dressed in her hairstyle here. She so resembles Linda Darnell, one of the, the one of the iconic figures of, of film noir of the late 1940s when this movie is being set. And and also all, every every role in this film, all the small roles, it was just beautifully cast. They went to New York City, and almost half of the roles were were that that were cast were cast in New York, getting theater actors. Uh, to play in the uh, to play in Devil in a Blue Dress, and it really pays off because everybody just it just nails their parts in this film. And uh, as far as the uh, supplements go, we get a commentary from 1998 that Carl Franklin uh, uh, recorded for uh, uh, for uh, an earlier physical release, only like three years after the the film was made and, and he's really good. I mean, this is, this is one of the great directors. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm hit and miss with director commentaries, but uh, I think this is really a, a, an excellent commentary. And he, he uh, liked all the film noirs and uh, especially the big sleep. They had, they had a story, they were going for a look, even though this was in color, but the kind of lighting of the big sleep. But he thought that the film noir aspects of the book would take care of themselves. He wanted to concentrate on the social realism, what it was like for black people in L.A. in 1948. And, and so all that kind of social realism comes through uh, as, as part of the genre. It's not, this is not a history lesson. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good entertainment that is very much in the tradition uh, and adding to the tradition of, of film noir and, uh, and most particularly the detective. Um, because Easy Rollins does, in sub subsequent books, Easy Rollins does become a private detective, uh, as well as many other things. Uh, and uh, uh, and they, they had planned to film the next two books. In 1995, there was only three uh, Easy Rollins uh, novels, and they wanted to film all three of them. But uh, the... Uh, the studio, TriStar Studio, went into new ownership and, and direction, and uh, of course they were part of the, the, old, uh, the old regime. So that never came to be. Um, 
Uh, and then we get a, uh, and then we get a couple great 2022 uh, supplements, brand new stuff. Uh, and we get a conversation between um, Carl Franklin and Don Cheadle, uh, how he was cast. Uh, Franklin was dubious because it was a big age difference between Denzel and, and Don Cheadle at the, uh, at the time. So they had to sort of age Cheadle <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Franklin or um, uh, Denzel Washington had to get into, uh, you know, real good shape to make him look younger. And of course, the great chemistry between the two. The, the acting, and, and like, like I say, in all these roles, the acting is, acting is terrific. And then we get a, a, a conversation again from 2022 with Walter Mosley, the, the novelist and uh, Bill Clinton's favorite novelist. He's, he's one of his things he's uh, noted for. And we hardly ever get to see, you know, the, the writers and novelists. Uh, being interviewed, and it's really a shame, you know, I don't have cable TV, but I go to my sister's house, and, you know, there's like a thousand channels, you never see anything, <laughs> anything, like, should there be a channel that, that, you know, includes, I guess C-SPAN does nonfiction work, but Mosley is just a great, great interview, I mean, the, uh, you know, he, he's being interviewed about how he is, um, well, he talks about how this was his first real success, and he did, hadn't meant this to be a series. He wanted to do a kind of Emil Zola um, depiction of all different facets of black life in, in, in L.A. But um, when he sold the book to, to the publisher, uh, they said, well, you got to do another one. You know, <laughs> this is gonna be, we want to see if we can have a successful series. So then it developed along, but actually, um, uh, Mosley has written far more non-detective stories than he has detect uh, than he has the Easy Rollins stories. And in fact, uh, I think he has a um, and he's also worked on developing and writing, uh, creating and writing a television series based on his books. The latest, I think, is The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray with Samuel L. Jackson, which is currently playing on uh, on Apple TV. So it's just, just a great uh, interview with Mosley. And then we also get a 2018 film noir uh, festival in Chicago where Carl Franklin is interviewed uh, by Eddie Muller before a showing of the um, of Devil in a Blue Dress and then afterwards. I wish this had been longer because Franklin is, is so articulate in, um, in discussing the movies and uh, discussing the relationship between Devil in a Blue Dress with... Uh, with the, the tradition of, of film noir. Uh, and then we get a booklet with this uh, criterion. Uh, again, we, this is a dark, this is a very dark uh, <laughs> kind of cover. Shows up well in the light. Uh, and it's, it, there's a lot of darkness in the movie as well. Um, not much on the inside, uh, but we do get a booklet, again, emphasizing the dark background. And, and an essay, and if I have any quibble, it's a quibble I often have with uh, Criterion essays. Uh, again, a lot, a lot uh, easier to see in this in this light. Uh, but I, you can read the Julian uh, uh, Julian Kimball, I believe his name was. You can read his essay on the Criterion um, website at Criterion.com, and if you click on Current, his uh, essay is all the essays. Uh, for Criterion releases are available there. Okay, a great release. I really love this one, really recommend it. One of the top releases of the year for Criterion. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I really appreciate it. Comments are always welcome. Take care.